Hey there, game makers. And wouldn't it be nice to kind of record your uh, gameplay, something like this, and then stop it, and then, for example, replay it. And this is what you see in a lot of uh, tutorials, or for example, as a game mechanic and so on. And the idea from my side is that we have kind of a fully functional player, which is this dude here. And of course here, our original player. And you want to use it for not just recording, I don't know how to, you know, in tutorials where you just show, hey, jump here or show a double jump. But for example, you want to attack something or you want to demonstrate, I don't know, make a mini cutscene. So therefore you can uh, advance the system for your liking. And therefore it's kind of a record system. So here we do just three things. We record, um, first of all, well, four things. A start position where we're starting off and then three arrays which are collecting the input so for example you press left or right then this is gonna get it uh, stored into an array and also the jump button so these three things are being recorded and that's pretty much it so this is how the whole thing works and we have like um, four inputs which we can have uh, with our controller here we can record, we can stop the recording, we can spawn, and then number four and five is, for example, saving that stuff into a text file because maybe uh, you want to use it, um, uh, replay it, and just you know want to store that into a text file. So this is kind of important. And of course, maybe you want to override it. So here, the whole thing in one big package, and it shouldn't be too difficult to understand. So hopefully you want to join me on this small little journey. Well, then stick around. This is One Up Indie. I am a developer, so if you like what you're seeing and hearing, then why not consider sharing, liking, and subscribing to the channel? Of course. Alrighty, so this is how that looks like. So for, for now, we just have two things. First of all, our player, fully functional. Basically, we're just collecting the input VK right, VK left, so left and right input, and then space for jumping that's it these three things are we are the kind of the gateways of collecting the input from the keyboard live during runtime and this is what we're going to replace so here this line and that so that's pretty much it and therefore we need kind of a record system which we're going to set up here so we're just going to clone and uh, player record something like this and as you can see, functionally, it's the same dude, but we want to give it some additional stuff so we can distinguish. So first of all, we want to give him, well, another blend because, um, yeah, so image blend, see green, I said green, now let's go for line, it doesn't really matter. And then we have an index number, which is starting at zero. And this index number, is gonna get toggled later on um, so it's starting with zero and then it, we will increase it and this index will kind of be kind of our timeline which we will go forward to so this is kind of important to understand and now let's have our record so basically uh, I don't know we can just drag it in here for now it's kind of empty I haven't done anything to it I just emptied out all the logic and here uh, we have, first of all, a create event here, just one variable. So for understanding, if we, for example, pressing one, two, three, four, five, it does anything. And then during runtime, it, it's kind of silly to sh say like, hey, now imagine we were doing this. So here we just have kind of an action variable, which is just saying like, hey, what we're doing. And then, for example, when we are pressing one, we are recording. When we are pressing two, we are stopping and so on. So here, um, this is how that works so basically we're just drawing ourselves and then we're drawing some text below it just saying what kind of action we're having for now nothing is happening because well uh, we need to organize a few things so first of all well what do we need to have first of all in our recorder object well we need first of all the very first thing is a start x and start y position which we want to record for now you can completely forget those numbers because they are pointless but later on we in our step event uh, in our um, once we for example start recording this will make any sense now we need to have three arrays 
which are called uh, input left, input right, and input action. As you can see, these arrays are set with zero, so they are empty, there's nothing in there. And then we also have an index variable, which we are running down in each step, so basically 60 times per second, we will have one new entry on each of one of those three guys. And this is how the whole thing works. And then of course, maybe uh, a variable, which is called recording. Why do I do this? Because um, this is then for me kind of a small little fail sale. For now, nothing is happening. So we need to do some recording. So for that, once again, we just copy these guys over here. And then because they are arrays, we say like, hey, our index is something. So what is that? For example, for our left, it is collecting the keyboard left. So basically this is the same stuff what we do on the player. And then we do the same on the right and the same for action, which is uh, space. So the right. And hopefully you can follow me here because now we are just filling in our uh, arrays with values. And because uh, we would be just collecting one value, we need to say plus plus. But now the point is now we are already recording stuff which we don't want. So let's say if we are not recording, so if recording is false, we just say exit. So basically all the code below is getting ignored. This is just a fail safe because now we auto record from the get go, which we don't want to. And therefore this index number will stay zero and these ones won't be filled. Kind of important to understand because now this is kind of an auto recording thing. Also, not necessarily, you know, but I think this is kind of a nice touch. So let's say we are recording, then we are having the this dude here being uh, colored red, and if not white, nothing is happening. So here, this is just for our fails. So now, once again, still we are just recording those inputs, but these inputs we actually need to input in our clone dummy of our player. So here we just say like, hey, what is this? VK right, ah, wrong one, VK right of what? Of our object record. As you can see here, this index is now here this file, this file. So hopefully this is not too confusing. And the same we have to do for the recorded array position of right here we go and the same we have to do for the action button so for space so here the recorded thing and then input or the, they yeah, call it action and now we are almost finished so now we need to kind of in quotations play the thing so here we just have our records progressing. So, so therefore we just say plus plus. But of course, um, at some point you will reach, you know, uh, this array, you will, you will go over the recorded one. So therefore we need to make a little fail safe, just saying like, uh, um, you know, don't do it too much for that. We just say like, hey, if, and you can just take any of these arrays. It doesn't really matter because they have all the same length. So we just take one of those guys and say, if array length of, for example, I don't know, one of those arrays, it doesn't really matter. It will give away um, one minus one because um, we are starting with zero. So if the index is smaller than the recorded thing, progress it. And then as you can see at some point, it will just stop, which is the idea of the whole thing. So here, and this is basically our recorded thing of our player 
And that's it. So we already have created our ghost. As you can see, all the logic is in there. So this is the beauty of it. And it will react the same as you would be controlling it. But now it's kind of a recorded thing. So we are almost done. Of course, almost, almost. Now we need to define our logic of our thing. Because for now, if you would start it, nothing would happen. Because um, we are not recording. So first of all, so first of all, we need to grab our position of our player. So the current one while we are recording. So if you press one, then of course we need to get rid of an old one. If for example, we're just having another already recorded player being in there that could create some conflicts, which we don't want. So therefore we just say like, Hey, if there's already a recorded player, get rid of him. So here, destroy ghost. This is a thing which I will be doing in all the other steps almost also also we need to reset values which which is super important so let's say we are starting to record we need to say like hey mm. first of all we need to resize all the arrays which are for example maybe already pre-filled and set them to zero so we can refill them super important of course also for the index which has maybe progressed to a specific number we need to reset that as well. And then we just say one thing, which is the easiest one, start recording. And this is how that works. Working beautifully and now we are pretty much done with that. So the second key, which is saying like, mm, let's stop it. So what do we do? Well, we just, first of all, if we have also a ghost in there, destroy it. This is once again, just the fail safe. And then we just say recording false. And then for example, if we say false here, this thing will toggle it off and then recording will stop. For now, everything is working pretty fine. And now the last thing, now we want to actually create our shadow. Once again, just as a fail step, you don't have to do this, but I think like uh, this will just, you know, alleviate a lot of um, uh, problems. Then we just say like, hey, let's create a ghost. And then we just say create layer, our correct, correctly last time um, saved position X and Y, and then just the record play. And then for example, once we start it, hopefully it all uh, works out. So let's see, we can move, play one, press one. We are recording, great. Do something, I don't know, something like this. Stop, okay, that works also. And then we're pressing three. Ta -da. That's pretty much it. So basically we created our recording and then each time we are pressing F3, we can kind of reset it if you like. So this is how that works. And the last part, which I'm going to brush over really fast because this maybe is kind of nice and dandy, but still you want to save it somewhere. This is the important part. Even though, for example, you can record it in runtime. Let's say you close Game Maker, then all the data is gone. This is not what we want to have, and therefore we need to save it somewhere, store it somewhere. And the somewhere is text file. So uh, let's actually make this a little bit faster. Just explaining what's actually happening here. So let's say we are pressing four. This is then additionally for you. First of all, we just say like, hey, we are storing into a thing. So if you don't know how any works, link in the description below where you can find a video tutorial on that. First of all, we need to once record uh, uh, any real, of course, not a string, a real here for your start X and Y position. This is a thing you just record once and then you just loop how long, for example, the um, the array was so for example I don't know the array input left or input right or input action doesn't really matter we store that into a variable called length store that also later on this will be really important because um, reading out could be a little bit tricky without that so we are storing the length of the array how long it is then uh, we are storing the first position which we stored as, as a start position x y and then we're just running a loop, which I love, uh, for example, here. And then we're just storing all the input positions of um, left, right, and 
action. So here we are storing that into an any text file and then we close the any. So here this is how that the loops a uh, loop looks like. Um, I guess I will just put the whole project file into my Discord so you can just download it and get, get it for free, of course, without the images. These I cannot give you because they're copyrighted. And then the last part, let's say you want to read from an ini file. So we do, do, do the same, ini open, ini close. Then we say like, hey, ini read real. First of all, we need to read out the X and Y position and store that here in our record. Uh, thing and then also we want to grab the length because now let's say we want to do a repeat loop we didn't know how long the stored uh, how how many entries we're having in the ini file so for for all the three guys here um, so therefore we need to store that beforehand so in step four and then um, we're just overwriting the ones which we're having of course before that, we need to kill all the entries, which we maybe have stored or maybe not. But of course, it's you know what we need to do. So just null the arrays and then refill them from the text file. And this is how the whole thing works. And it, it does. So basically, that was it from my side. A little bit longer video than expected, but um, hopefully a little bit more modern explanation on, on how you do that. Just store it. In, in that and of course if you want to go and store more things so i don't know more positions of of the player or maybe some enemies and so on you can do the whole stuff also and just you know store more values because for now we just stored input but of course you can do more if you want so here uh, you can put in more arrays and because the arrays, you won't be clogging up too much of your memory and so on. And that was pretty much it. Have a good one. Bye-bye.